Wish, what did he say? What's that German thing he's got on there? Ish, wish, wish, wish. Uh. wish. <laughs> squish, squish. Which, 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 which did you itch? <laughs> if you want, I'm sad. He's got that all throughout his Russian body. Yeah, I was thinking like ish, DB the ish, but no. Which, which, which way? Yeah, he's like, who knows? Yeah. You what it means? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> You'll find a lot of that in Zechariah. <laughs> All I know is Ehahan Fogel. <laughs> He's got the birds. Well, amen. Once we finish figuring out Hebrews and laying everything out, we'll get over in Daniel and. <laughs> <laughs> we'll straighten up all these heretics. <laughs> huh? No. No. I I stopped in my Bible commentary. I stopped in five because I have no idea. <laughs> just, you know, I just. May as well not put anything down until uh, at right. least sort of, mm -hmm. but, it, right? yeah, yeah, because it, yeah. it's either way. It's like we was talking uh, last week. Well, let's go and pray, then we'll get into it. Lord God, we sure do thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Pray that you'd help us. Pray that you'd just uh, clear our mind, Lord. You know, the, the world and the junk of the world, God, just uh, has a way of getting into our minds and seeping into our spirits, Lord, and just... Uh, kind of hampering uh, our learning, God, and so I pray that you just uh, uh, clarify our minds, Lord, and bring us back to the Word of God, and Lord, I, I pray that you just uh, help us as we try to go through this book, Lord, and uh, help me, Father, I, I pray that you just uh, guide and direct us, for it's in your name, Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Amen. Uh, last week... Um, we were talking about verses one through three, uh, and um, there was uh, two questions. One about the priest line, whether it's twenty-five through fifty, whether it started at twenty-five or at thirty. Oh, yeah. Numbers four and numbers eight. Uh, Honestly, I, I didn't even look at that. Um, and then the the other one was, abideth a priest continually. Okay, so um, let's go back through here and uh, look at that. Because that one, uh, the, um, and it's not that the other one doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's a legitimate question, legitimate, uh, seemingly uh, contradiction there. Uh, although I guess uh, even if you had them starting at thirty, they're you know they'd still work. Um, but uh, we'll we'll touch on that one later because honestly, I didn't didn't look at it. Did you have a chance to look at that? No, no. brother Jesse. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, it says, For this Melchizedek, in chapter 7, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abram, Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Okay, the first thing that, that I notice is it starts off four which is a conjunction, and the verse right prior to that is about Jesus Christ, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, you know, uh, and then it goes into talking about the man, Melchizedek uh, of Abraham. And so it's uh, kind of like uh, the things that I would do, I do not. But the things that I would not do, those I find myself doing, it's kind of like 
back and forwards, and it's hard to figure out who he's talking about. Um, it says, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Well, we know who, who he did that to. He did that to the king of Salem, Melchizedek, the, the priest of the Most High God. And so uh, it's dealing with the man. Um, but at the, the, the same time, it's a double application unless that man is Jesus Christ, okay? Uh, unless he is Jesus Christ. Um, first being, by interpretation, king of righteousness. So he's interpreting what, what was just said, you know, Melchizedek. First being king of righteousness, and after that, also king of Salem, which is king of peace. And then talking about him, as far as we can understand, without father, without mother, without descent. If that is this person over in uh, Genesis, then that person shows up just without any of that, without descent. If it's dealing with the order of verse 20, uh, chapter 6, verse 20, if it's dealing with the order of Melchizedek, then the order is without descent, meaning that there is no son inheriting the place of the father and, and all of that. But then it, uh, the, the plot thickens <laughs> and it gets harder. Because it says, without descent, having neither beginning of days. Now, if that's about the man, then who else can it be unless it's kind of a, a restart? And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Again, if this is the man... He's still living today. If this is talking about the man, then that man is still today. Okay? But made like unto the Son of God. Uh, col colon? Semicolon? Semicolon. Semicolon. Mm -hmm. Abideth a priest continually. Now, the, the issue we're having is if this is the man, if this is the, the man, okay, we'll just put, uh, the man, and that's Genesis... 14? Yes, sir. Okay, or uh, Okay, either it's the man or it's Jesus Christ. Uh, in a pre-carnate form, what's the last verse uh, in 6? Um, what is the forerunners for entered even Jesus made the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek? Yeah, what number is that? Oh, I'm sorry, verse 20. 20. Okay, either it's talking about a literal man or it's talking about Jesus. Now, what are... We have over here on Jesus' case, we have that 
Uh, he has no beginning. He has no end. I got that one. <laughs> okay. So no beginning, no ending. Um, he's uh, not born. Okay. He has no father, no mother. Uh, and he, he never... never dies okay um has no end of life so all all of those fit i mean clearly with with jesus the problem is that jesus the man does have a beginning jesus the man does have a birth jesus the man does have a death and so all, all of this, you would have to spiritualize it and make it talking about Jesus, the, the God man. The God, later he was man, but it was a pre-incarnate appearance. Right. You know, like other, other places where he, he shows up as a man, you have him over in Joshua. He shows up as uh, the angel of the Lord, the captain of the Lord's host. He, he shows up, you know, as a man. Um, but it's always as, at least as far as what uh, I see. Now, on the man's side, <clears throat> if it is a man then it seems to contradict all of these things because uh, a man does have a beginning just by the nature of being a man. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things uh, will say yes to this one. He obviously is born and he obviously had to die, right. for it is appointed unto man once to die. Uh, so how can it be an actual man? Now over on Jesus' side, uh, if we look at why, why it can't be Jesus, okay, is uh, that... In all of uh, the theo uh, theophanies, mm -hmm. in all of the Christophanies, right. uh, those things, uh, never does he take a <clears throat> worldly office. In other words, like that of uh, being a king, uh, he, he never took that. He is going to be that one day, but he's not been that yet. Or else they would have had the king of righteousness because he would have been that already. Uh, and uh, so uh, he never takes that. We, we see in the scriptures a worldly office. Um he, uh, in his, and if it's the angel of the Lord, um, then you have uh, the, the problem with um, being uh, the same thing, a uh, worldly office. Um, and being that it says that he was the man, a man. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and he's made after the order of Melchizedek. There in verse 20, it seems like that that man was a different person other than Jesus Christ, or else, you know, how would that work? Um, <clears throat> it, it's just hard to understand. And like I said at the beginning of it, at the end of this, we're still not going to know who this guy is, right? Uh, I, I don't believe. Uh, we, may, we may be able to say definitely who he's not, but uh, to narrow it down and for us to be able to dogmatically say it's somebody, uh, I don't think we can. Uh, we may uh, be convinced sure. it's somebody. Uh, that, that's one thing. Now, uh, I'll throw this out and then we'll, we'll look at it. Uh, we've seen that this man, um, the Jews, the Jews say he's uh, Shem. That's what the, the Talmud has Melchizedek as, as Shem. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, that's as good a guess as any. Uh, but Shem does have a beginning. Shem does have a birth. Shem does have all of those things. Okay. Um, now, in the, the order, he doesn't because he didn't inherit it by his father. He didn't inherit it through his mother. And so in the order, he didn't. But again, we're talking about the man, right? Not just the order. Uh, and so uh, Shem is a tough one to, to pin it on uh, just because they're, he doesn't add up with, with a lot of one, especially this one. I mean, that one is special. Um, so just for the sake of, of argument, we'll cross him out. Uh, now, Here's uh, one that uh, we can look at. Uh, Enoch, uh, he, he doesn't have a death recorded anywhere. Shem does have a death recorded. He died at 600 yeah. something years old. Mm -hmm. And so it is recorded. Enoch, it's not recorded. Mm -hmm. And uh, Enoch, you know, is the only one uh, that is not recorded that it could be in that time frame because Elijah comes after, so, you know, it yeah. uh, kind of doesn't, doesn't fit him. Right. But Enoch, it could be, especially, we'll say this one. Now, there are some that uh, say Enoch was not taken to heaven, uh, that he was just translated to a different mountain because they go and search for him. Just like uh, Elijah, they went and searched for him and uh, they didn't find him and, and stuff like that. I think he went to heaven. I think he was translated. Uh, I think he went from a, a carnal person to, you know, a, uh, a translated person. Um, the problem with that, there's always a problem with theories. Uh, is you have uh, John, okay? John, the chapter three. Uh, no man ascended up into heaven except the Son of Man. That oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll look at that in just a moment. That's the main issue that these people that believe that Enoch wasn't translated to heaven. They they had a problem with. Uh, the other thing they have a problem with is in Hebrews um, 9.27. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that says that um, for it is appointed unto man once to die. And so they say, well, he has to have died because he is a man and it's appointed unto man once to die. 
the only problem with that is that it's not uh, it's not everyone uh, because a lot of people didn't die once they died twice or else they're still living you know uh, so um, maybe Highlander does have something you know uh, but um, so there's a, a lot of people that died twice Lazarus the, the widow main son uh, and so there's a lot of people that, that came back to life and died again uh, and all of that uh, so there, there's problems with uh, saying Enoch wasn't translated to heaven but there's issues with it too being Enoch because although Enoch um, he never dies it's never recorded that he dies uh, Enoch does have a, a dad, Lamech. Lame. Mm -hmm. uh, so he does have a birth, but it, it's before or predates uh, the beginning of the new earth, you know, uh, of Noah. And so, um, anyway, there's problems. Uh, who is it? <clears throat> Not that we know of, yeah. but he's uh, Melchizedek's a Gentile priest, right? But mm -hmm. specifically him, though. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Other than him, uh, the Bible indicates they walked with the Lord, right? Um, okay. But other than that, no. Uh, him being a, a descendant, um, or a a father of Noah and all of that. Um, but this, uh, there, there's a lot of issues with it. Uh, and, you know, we know that it's not, if it's a man, okay, um, if it's a man, we know that he's not still fulfilling that role as priest because Christ is our priest. Amen. But let me throw this out there that Christ is a high priest. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so is, I don't know, I don't know if the Bible tells this, but is the Melchizedek order like the Levitical order that there's high priest and there's priest? Um, Have you ever heard like Melchizedek being like an angel? Uh, yeah, other than the angel of the Lord. Yeah. Yes, the problem with that is that you have a an angel receiving uh, tithes and blessing someone, and in Hebrews it says to to what of the angels you know that they. Um, they really, I guess, there's problems with it being that I would, in my opinion, uh, just because tithes is a way of worshiping, mm -hmm. and so I would, uh, gotcha. I wouldn't mm -hmm. lean towards it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's uh, at the end of the day, that's what what you're left with is no, who I who can it be? I mean, Paul says it's a young righteous, king of righteousness. Mm hmm. And uh, is that king of righteousness? Uh, is it? The man, you know, because he's king of Salem, and uh, 
but is the order the, the righteous? Is he made righteous through the order and the order is based on Jesus, but then it says Jesus is made after the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. And so it, it throws it again for, and so, uh, man, you got about nailed down and then something comes and flips it over. And it's always doing that. Um, so in Genesis 14, right? Abraham still is technically a Gentile. No. <clears throat> he would have already been a, so he a, a Hebrew. He is a Gentile priest between him and God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's where they the Jews want to make Shem that priest because at least he's Semitic. <laughs> you know, I, you know, at least he's in the right. You know, you can't have especially a Hamite man, uh, and you know, it's just. And, and at the end of the day, we try not to, um, but make no mistake, when you believe something, you will take the Bible and kind of make it fit into what you believe if you don't follow the Holy Ghost. And we don't a hundred percent of the time, and so at the end of the day, you have to say, "I could be wrong," and go back to the scriptures and say, "It says here, after the order of Melchizedek, he was made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek," and say, "I don't understand it." But that's what it says. You know, just uh, like those places that, um, uh, for instance, one that, that I had was the Holy Ghost in the, the Old Testament. Uh, and for years I, I had trouble with that because... I always believed that he he showed up in the New Testament, that he wasn't, you know, around in the Old Testament. But you come to verses, especially in Hebrews, where it talks about him in the Old Testament. And so at the end of the day, when I would come to it, I would have to say, yeah, he was, the Bible says he was grieved with those in the wilderness. I don't understand all that, you know, I, and that's how I had to take it because I didn't understand it, um, but, you know, I, I, I saw the possibility, rare possibility, uh, that I was wrong about him not being in the Old Testament. I say that sarcastically, um, and, and I was wrong, you know. Although he's not there in name, he is there in, in person. Um, but, um, so at the end of the day, you have, to, you have to come to the Bible in these places where it's not dogmatic. I'm not talking about, you know, places where we have it nailed down and, you know, we know those places. Uh, take uh, Jeremiah... Um, I think I actually put in the, the notes. Maybe I didn't. I think it was 32. 34. 34, did I put it in there? 34, 18. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, take that verse, for instance. <clears throat> and I will give the men that have transgressed my covenant, which have not performed the words of the covenant, which they, these men that he's given it to, which they had made before me, when they cut the calf in twain and passed between the parts thereof. Well, that's a reference to Abraham walking in, in the midst of that sacrifice that covenant but he says that he's going to hold these men in Jeremiah's day responsible for what Abraham did way back in Abraham's day and he said they did that they did that how can you reconcile that how, how can, okay, over in uh, Kings, it says, um, oh, I had to open my mouth. I do that before I think about it. Um... It's a famous, uh, supposedly, contradiction. I think it is. Uh, has the eye? It's the one, uh, one says that he reigned 22 years uh, in Israel, and uh, in Chronicles it says 42 years. Um, Reign seventeen years, Jeroboam the son of Well, I'm going to have to look that up. It's terrible. Ish, divid, ish. Maybe what chapter is that? Seventeen. Seventeen chapter eight. Seventeen chapter number eight, twenty-six. Forty-five. Forty-six. Yeah, twenty-six. And then we're gonna look at second. Two and twenty years old. And then second Chronicles twenty-two.
Yeah, that's it. Look at those uh, two, two things there. Okay, we'll we'll read them. Do you already know the answer to this question? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's a hard one though. Okay. Uh, so I'm not I'm not sure, but I'm you know I'm convinced of it. Um, Second Kings eight, uh, verse twenty six says two and twenty years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of Amri, king of Israel. Second Chronicles 22. Uh, I lost it. Thank you. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. Who? Bill Grady? No, Hogan. Oh. Yeah, that's his name, right? Mike Grady? Mike Grady. Yeah, he answered this question the other day. I just can't remember what he said. But I know the video, though. <laughs> and this is one of those places. Um, you've got to say, Second Chronicle, if you're going to be Bible believers, okay, um, and this is hard for a lot of people. And so they, this is uh, not necessarily at this verse, but around this uh, doctrine, what will happen is that they'll come to a place that in their minds is unreconcilable, if that's the word. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll say uh, there's no way both of them can be true because they apparently say different things, okay? Um, but they don't say different things, okay? They say different things when you're looking at it uh, in, that, in that form, okay? Uh, let me use uh, a verse that we all know in Mark uh, 16, uh, 16 around there where it says, um, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Uh, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, right? Okay. Um, yeah, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Right. Okay, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. We believe that, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, was, I was worried. Yeah. Okay, uh, we believe that, sure. but we don't believe that it's necessary to be baptized in order to be saved. Right. And somebody at the, at the first look at that would say, well, then you don't believe that. But we do. But what we believe is more than that. We believe more than what it says. We believe that he that believeth and tithes shall be saved. Sure. We believe he that believeth and standeth on his head shall be saved. We believe he that believeth and danceth shall be saved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, because all of those are, are saying the same thing. It's not the action that's on the end of that. It's belief. 
And so if, if he reigned 42 years, he obviously reigned 22 years, right? Um, now, I'm not saying that's the answer, but what I'm saying is that they both don't say two opposite things. Uh, it's just how we look at it because we've been trained, uh, and I say trained, Christendom has been trained. This Bible is to be, um, uh, to be, oh, yeah, but it it's kind of like, I'm looking for a word. Give me just a moment. It, it'll fly by. <laughs> Not literally. Um, it, it's not held in contempt, but it's always liable to be mistaken. It, it's something that's always, it could be wrong at any given moment. It, you know, it's, and I've got the word, but I, I can't think of it. Um, but anyway, that's the idea. Uh, you know, it's always subject to failure. Yeah, and so you, you, you have that ingrained in you uh, by preachers saying a better rendition is this or this is what the Greek says or vice versa. Um, and so what they do in this particular place is they go with the Septuagint that says 22 years in both of them. And uh, and uh, that that clears up it, and so as, as Bible believers, what and I say Bible believers loosely, as Bible believers, what will happen is we'll come to a place like this, and because we we truly don't believe that the King James is the infallible, perfect, inerrant Word of God. We believe it is the best translation out there of the Word of God. Right. But the Word of God is some figment of our imaginations, you know, some Texas Receptus, there, that's never been. You know, uh, and so uh, then we can take these places and say, oh, well, yeah, that was just, you know, uh, some scribe sweat fell on it and it, it, it raised, you know, and... Uh, so it's actually 22 years, you know, the King James translators, they did as good as they, they could have done, but, you know, we know better. Uh, and I, I'm saying that's not a Bible believer. Whether they say they're King James Bible believers or not, when you come to places like this, you have to come to them and say, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, it says 22 years. Yeah, that one says 42 years. Well, which one's right, both of them? Yeah, but is it 22 years or is it 42 years? Well, in Kings, it's 22 years, and Chronicles is 42 years. And uh, you have to believe. That's why it's called belief. It's belief. Yes, we're, we're subject to not knowing the answer, but if we knew, we wouldn't believe. We wouldn't have faith if we knew. And uh, so um, there, there's going to be places like that that you're going to come to. Maybe not this. Maybe uh, not um, anything like this. But I will tell you this, that you're going to come to a verse. And your faith in this Bible in this book will be shaken. It will be shaken. And uh, you, you, will, you will at that point, at that point, not before then, but at that point, you'll know whether you're a Bible believer or not. And, you know, it's easy 
to be a Bible believer when we've got all the answers. Sure. But when we don't know, man, that's when it's hard. That's when, you know, it's, it's hard because by nature we want to have all the answers. Uh, so look over that. We'll leave that for homework uh, next week. Those uh, <laughs> two. <laughs> no, uh, but um, the the answer is is in our study actually. Um, so let's go back over to Hebrews. Hebrews uh, chapter 7 and verse number 4. And we'll start this week's lesson. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Jesse, for that question last week. Yeah. <laughs> that was a blessing to our hearts. It really sent, uh, it, um, solidified our trust in who Melchizedek is. And so, verse 4, now consider how great this man was. Again, we have that, you know, keep coming up. This man was, not is, but just got done saying priest continually. I forgot to say this, but um, made like unto the Son of God, Abideth a priest continually. Is that the Son of God abideth the priest continually? Or Melchizedek abideth a priest continually? Um, I think, um, I think doctrinally it's Jesus Christ, but right here in the text, I think it's Melchizedek uh, because of the punctuation there. Uh, I don't see how it could just uh, be a, if it was talking about the Son of God, I think, and I am not a an English major, <laughs> obviously, uh, but I, I think it would have had a comma instead of a, a semicolon if it was talking about the immediate, pro, uh, the immediate, um, subject there that it was referring back to the Son of God, it would have a comma, in my opinion, not a semicolon. Mm -hmm. The semicolon, I, I think, uh, refers back to um, Melchizedek, the subject of the, the context rather than the immediate pronoun or... Anyway... Um, but that, that, that is a good question, and that's a hard, hard question, hard answer. Um, so, was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils? Now, we, we've already seen how this, this man Melchizedek He's outside of Abraham. Abraham gives him the tenth. So therefore you have someone that is above the father of the Jews. And you can see why the Jews, man, this was hard, hard for them to swallow. This, this, uh, this whole doctrine of Melchizedek is hard. Um, for a Jew, just because of this, you have a Gentile over their, their greatest patriarch. Um, it says, gave the tenth of the spoils. Okay. Uh, and verily, uh, they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of priesthood, Okay, so you have priesthood here. You have order in verse 20. And uh, you have uh, order continuing down uh, through the, the end of the, uh, the chapter. You have this order 
you know, of Melchizedek versus the priesthood of the Levites. Um, so back in, in uh, Genesis, you have uh, the tenth being a tithe. Uh, go over to Genesis chapter 14. I'm going to take about five minutes, so y'all bear with me. Uh, and it's just so y'all know, it's still recording. So don't, don't talk about how much knowledge I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say what you're going to go do. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Genesis chapter 14. Verse 18, I guess. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High, God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Okay, so um, this uh, there at um, the end of uh, delivered thine enemies into thine hand. 
a period, and he, Abraham, gave him tithes of all. And so um, you have this tithe showing up, and tithe is simply a, a tenth, okay? Um, and uh, the, the objections to, um, to tithe is that it's a ordained under the law, and it's not, um, it's not given in any of the Paulinian uh, doctrines that, that we have any of this uh, tenth. Um, number one, it's not under the law that it's given. It is given under the law also, but it predates the law. Okay, uh, this, this number of the tenth. And... Uh, God only knows why the tenth. Uh, ten is is an interesting number. Uh, it's a whole lot more interesting than ten and a half. Uh, <laughs> but tenth is a, an interesting number. Even when it talks about... Um, Even the Jews, tenth plays a part, okay? Um, you, have, you have 12, but if you take away the two sons of Joseph that were adopted in, you have 10. Obviously, if, you know... Uh, Levi and uh, Dan are, you know, taken out. Um, and Joseph, Levi and Joseph. Um, you have ten, and, and the Bible says he numbered the Gentile Al, uh, the Gentiles after the number of Israel. And um, you know, there, uh, there's just a lot in that tenth, and why God chose the tenth part, you know, in in here. And so there there's a lot to the tenth. Um I don't think any of us will ever understand all of it. Uh all of what what entails uh the tenth. Uh even even the um let's see just a moment. You have seven notes on the piano, but then you have five half notes. That'd be 12 altogether. Anyway, I've, I was thinking of something. Um, Anyway, we won't get off on the numbers. Um, but 10 ha has a lot of, of, of connection with, with the Bible and different things. Um, I'd like a, a study just on, on the 10th. Um, but anyway, he gives uh, a 10th, a, a tithe to, uh, to Melchizedek. Uh, you have uh, Jacob's tithe there at Bethel. Jacob tithes there at Bethel in Genesis 28, verse 22, uh, is where uh, Jacob tithes. And notice that Jacob tithes, he, he doesn't tithe to a person, he tithes to a rock. Who does Jacob give tithe to? Twenty-eight, <clears throat> and this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Well, you know how how can you give something physical to God other than a house? But understand here he's. Dealing with this stone, 
you know, it's not even, you know, a house like later on you have at least a, a tent, you know, but uh, here it's just, you know, a stone up on a hill. Um, but nonetheless, it says he, you know, uh, will give him a, a tenth. Okay. Um, then you have uh, in Genesis 18... And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of memory. He sat in the tent. That's not what. Uh, Exodus. Exodus, Jethro. When Jethro, the priest of Median, okay, who did uh, Jacob give the tenth to? We don't know. Uh, there in the passage, obviously it's a, a rock, but was he referring to, you know, I'll give thee the rock a tenth, or was he referring to God? And uh, was there a priest in those days? You know, that, that we don't know about. Obviously, Abraham had a priest in Melchizedek. Could there been a priest? Could Jethro been a priest? Uh, we know he was a priest uh, of Median, uh, which isn't, <laughs> isn't necessarily a good place. And uh, Jethro isn't, you know, the best candidate for priesthood, but neither is Balaam. Um, and probably one of the, the worst uh, prophets be Balaam. Uh, but is he a prophet of the, of the Lord? You know, that's, it's just, you know... Um, something to consider uh, whether it was uh, a priest that he gave it to uh, or whether it was just to God um, you know in in sacrifices it could have been you know uh, out of ten camels he would offer one up uh, to God and uh, out of money he would give ten away you know we don't, we don't know um, there, there's a lot in the Bible you're not going to know, and uh, you have to be okay with that. And there's some things that, that God reveals to us in, in time, uh, but not everything. But what we need to take away from uh, this, at least, is that Abraham tithed to Melchizedek. Therefore, Melchizedek was over Abraham, because it says that Melchizedek not only received the tithe, okay, and uh, something else you want to make note of is that Abraham, it says, paid the tithes, okay? Go to Hebrews uh, chapter 7. And so one thing is that a tithe, um, it, a tithe isn't, something you give it's something you pay okay a a payment uh at least in abraham's case a payment is something that is owed it's something that's owed okay uh now let me ask you how much of what you have is owed to god How much of what you have, you have because of God? Everything, everything right? So if, if that's the case, then everything is God's. Okay? Uh, just throw that out there. Um, 
Hebrews, I said uh, seven, uh, look down in verse nine, yeah, nine. And as I may say, um, and as I may so say, Levi also, whom receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. Now it's interesting, and I just caught this, uh, Levi pays the tithes. Abraham gave the tithes. Look at verse 4. Right. Patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Uh, in, ex, um, in Genesis, I want to see what it says. I think it says he gave. Um, and he gave him tithes of all. And he gave him tithes of all. Uh, so may want to make a note of that. Uh, that Abraham under under grace, it's given; under the law, it's paid. That, that man, that preach. I need to share that with brother man. Uh, under grace, it's given; under the law, it's paid. Because that's that's what we've always been taught: is a tithe belongs to the Lord, so you pay it. Okay, I'm talking about the conventional, you know, church uh, teaching is the tithe belongs to the Lord, so you you pay that, you know, you you pay it; it's His. Um, but this now I'm I'm going on purely inspiration. It's not study, so I, I could be totally wrong. Uh, so you uh, have to study it out on yourself. That's why we've called Berean Bible <laughs> Institute. Uh, you study it out on yourself. But um, if this is the case, then grace, a tithe, you give a tithe because all of it belongs to him, so you give. It's, it becomes a free will offering because truthfully, God doesn't, he doesn't want you to give out of, out of debt. I mean, even, you know, uh, I, I'll say this, um, my son start, started working. Man, you know how, how pleased I would be? I, I'm trying to uh, refrain from using proud. We, we often talk about prop. You know how proud I'd be as a father, um, but how pleased I would be if if he just came up and said, "Hey, Dad, I, you know, I just wanted to give you fifty dollars or something." Now that I'm working, man, that would you know be pleasing rather than me having to say, "Hey, son, you you need to start chipping in, son. You you guys start chipping in." Well, how much to fifty dollars? Oh man, yeah. What what would God think? You know, if He had to tell us to give, you know, it'd be the same thing. I I would think, you know. But again, I'm you know I'm flesh. But then God says that He's a Father, so He likens Himself to us. So. I would think he would have the same traits as we. Um, do I think that we ought to tithe in the church age? Most definitely. Um, but I don't think we ought to... Um, we ought to make tithe a doctrine in that, you know, you have to tithe... Um, I think you ought to, but you ought to give as the Lord gives to us. And I mean, if all you can do is 10%, amen, glory to God. Man, if all you can do is 5%, if you just give joyfully, I, I think God would rather, you know, 5% joyfully rather than 10 having to ring you out. Now, the, the New Testament doctrine of tithing comes from the passage over there where it says, 
Um, he, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, they tied the mint, they tied the, all these things. Um, and he said,